Hey guys, today I am going to talk about the direction of Magic the Gathering. I think it's heading in the right direction. They figured out how to make more money from other people's IP, which is exactly what Weiss does. So they're not the first ones to really, and I always kind of wondered, like, they're a huge licensing company. So when I, IP turned out, I just didn't understand. They have all these connections to IPs like Has um my Little Pony, Power Rangers, Transformers. If you've ever seen Monopoly, any favorite anime, any favorite TV show, or even anything that's ever could be made has been made a version of Monopoly. That is a licensing deal that they're striking. So they already have all of those. I actually went to the mall the other day and they had a the office licensing. The office and I was like, oh, maybe we'll have the office card soon. So remember, they own Monopoly and they own Clue. These two have been licensed to almost every single part in Hello Kitty, Sanrio, and so on. So I always wondered, like, if Hasbro, which is a parent company, has all access to at least negotiating these licenses, then how come they don't bring it to Magic the Gathering or Dungeons and Dragons, right? Which is their premier flagship IPs. Well, they are. Now, you might disagree with Universe Beyond. I thought Universe Beyond initially was a very bad idea. But sales are sales. And the sales indicate that Fallout was the, is going to be the best-selling set of all time. Lord of the Rings previously was the best-selling set of all time. What they have in common is they do not have any Planeswalkers. They don't have any Magic the Gathering IP available. And that's really important to know because it's a lot easier to take somebody else's IP licensing. You know, Marvel. Marvel is going to make Magic cards soon. Uh, we're going to get Final Fantasy, which is Square Enix. So they're going to open up their entire, um, I think, Dragon something. I used to play a game when I was much younger, Dragon Free or something. It was the predecessor to Nier. Would love to see that. Uh, I would love to see that series. I really grew up with that series and kind of enjoyed playing it. And I think high school or early college, it was like a PS1 game. Maybe it was even like middle school. I don't really remember. But yeah, they have. Oh, Square Enix has a slew of IPs, including obviously all the Final Fantasies. Um, so instead of making their own card games, Hello Kitty, Sam Rio could open IPs. They have Hanzu Miku. They could have. Hollow Life, that would be a very big IP for them. There's just so many. Hasbro is good at one thing, and it's licensing. It kind of sucks at making its own IP. You know, and Magic the Gathering, the same way. They spend how many millions of dollars trying to build books, and no one reads the books. And I, it's, it's almost, it's really weird how poorly the IP has been managed in Magic the Gathering. Like, you don't know or have... Most people don't even have a favorite Planeswalker, which is crazy to me. Because that's the whole idea of the IPs, right? And in the future, like, what, do you see any, like, pluses? Like, I, I used to have Funko figures. They were supposed to make a movie and an anime series. That Why would you need to do that when other people would do it for you for no cost? And you can just piggyback off that movie or that Amazon series. That makes a lot more sense to me um, in terms of resources allocation. So I've always said this. Magic is the best card game of all time. It is better than MetaZoo. It is better, better than Flesh and Blood. It is better than all these new cards. Sorcery. It's better than that. I know people say, oh, this game's better. At the end of the day, Magic is it has done something that these games have not. It stood the test of time. So meaning the mechanics haven't got boring when new mechanics were added, they didn't really take away from the older mechanics. And you look at the dual lands. The dual lands are just a very simple mechanic. Still some of the most valuable cards in the history of the game. Uh, the price of cards are going up, ED8. The so dual lands have been a fantastic investment. I, If I had just put money into dual lands and not sealed product, not other stupid shit, like, man, I would have tripled my investment. Like, that's how good it has been. And that's a triple an investment on a buy list, by the way. Not not on, you know, eBay sales and so on. And on a legit buy list from Card Kingdom. And it's all because of EDH Commander. I mean, they're, at least price-wise, they're really moving in the right direction. 
and I can see that they're making more money than they've ever made before, which is a good sign of their health. I don't know, that's how I feel. I feel like that things are looking up in Magic the Gathering. I'm most of the time very negative. But I, I, again, I look at these dog me ever loyal. I look at all these cards and I'm like, you know, what would be better advertising for a Fallout set to buy on Amazon than Amazon making a, uh, a series, which is very, very good. I watched it with my girlfriend. It was a very good series. We look forward to Fallout 2. And advertising the cards, like you, you they, Amazon has a ton of information. So if you're watching the Fallout series and you enjoy Magic, what 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 ads are they going to show in front of you? They're going to show ads for the Magic: The Gathering Fallout series, right? And I'm sure they got money licensing from that as well. So this is a very easy strategy. So something so simple that even a even I don't think Wizard of the Coast can mess it up. Um, it would be very difficult for me to imagine like what could go wrong here, uh, and I, I I don't think anything could go wrong. It just again, they're not in charge of. If you told me they had to make a magic TV show, I would think, oh, it would suck. If you told me they had to make a magic movie, it would suck. Um, the problems are very very obvious. Is they they don't make good IP and they don't make good lore. They are really 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 bad at both of those two things. So when you let other people handle it, or the other people who are more dedicated, who are more fans, who are actually, you know, into the lore and they are into the series and so on, that's gonna work a hell of a lot better than when you have basically social justice warriors making the lore for everyone to do. I would say that in the long term, uh, Magic the Gathering financially is quite healthy. Uh, my, quote, investments have done very well, so I'm in a much better mood than when they were doing poorly. That, that should be obvious to everybody, right? It's, you know, things can change in time, and I look at the Card Kingdom buy list, and I'm pretty happy with the places that the Underground Seas and the other dual lands and Wheel of Fortune and uh, Sarah and Sanctum, I'm very happy with uh, the current price points of these cards. So we'll see in the future, um, but yeah, they're getting a manga, and it's like this, it's the same idea with this manga, which they're going to have exclusive cards for. Why create your own manga, because you're really terrible at creating IP, when someone, uh, some other dude can create the manga, do a really good job at it, and then you just license it to them. You just officially license it, and now you just kind of piggyback off that, and that, that helps Matt. Magic, has, for a long time, hasn't understood this concept, which is a really easy concept. You, you are a licensing company. That's what you are. You are not a creative design company. You're not a bunch of creative people who know what they're doing. Most of the hard work was done by Richard Garfield many years ago. And you can build upon that work, yes, but at the same time, you shouldn't really be creating your own IP, you should just be using other people's IPs. That's what Universe Beyond is. Anyway, let me know if you guys agree or disagree in the comments below. Bye, guys.